Paul, this is Paul's letter. He's been uh, freed from uh, his house arrest, and he's writing Timothy a letter. It's from Paul to Timothy. It's not a letter to the general church. It's just a one-on-one, leader to leader. And Paul's trying to encourage young Timothy, who's having his battles there. And, uh, and it's uh, so many lessons, so many lessons for us as a church, and more so as leaders, if you're a leader in this church, and more importantly, if you are an elder or for the three incoming elders, uh, there's some real neat lessons here. So I trust that this morning you can go away feeling uh, built up and encouraged with what the Lord's got to share with us. If you have a pew Bible in front of you, uh, we're going to be reading from 1 Timothy. It's on page 1060, 1060. Feel free to turn there just in case I start reading something else. You can correct me. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 to 16, and verse 20 to 21. And I thought I might just read that this morning to give us some context about what I'm going to speak on. So follow along with me. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. I charge you to keep the command without spot or blame until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. Actually, I could actually just about put these up for you too. Sorry. If you haven't got that in front of you. God, the blessed and only ruler and the King of kings and Lord of the Lord, who alone is immortal and lives in inapproachable light. Whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honour and might forever. Amen. In verse 20, Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and in so doing have departed from the grace. Uh, from the faith, sorry. Grace be with you all. As you would have seen there, the title of, uh, of my message is Flee, Follow and Fight. I wanted to keep it simple. I wanted you to be able to go home. And when you're asked uh, throughout the week what was the message on, I want you to remember we are to flee, we are to follow and we are to fight. Paul is telling Timothy in the church to flee from something, to follow after something else and to fight something. And as a church, the church here at 109 Family, we embark on a new chapter of leadership. And as we continue to seek God's uh, guidance and direction for this church, may each one of us, and especially our new elders, Leighton, John and Andrew, take heed of Paul's words to Timothy this morning. You are to flee, you are to follow, and you are to fight. Paul, who has been freed from house arrest in Rome, is writing this personal letter, as I said to young Timothy, leader to leader, uh, who was in a position of leadership in the church. Paul established in Ephesus on an earlier missions trip, as we know. Timothy was God's man, and Paul's choice to oversee the troubled church at Ephesus. As we read through the, the uh, reading there, you'll, you'll notice all those verbs or doing words as we were taught. Flee, pursue, or follow, fight, take hold, keep, charge, guard, avoid, turn away from. To our incoming elders, we have some things to do. There's a lot of things we must do in leadership. And as the congregation um, follow that leadership, be mindful that the elders are fleeing some things, they're pursuing other things, they're fighting, they're taking hold, they're keeping charge. So Leighton and John and Andrew, 
you have some things to do as overseers of this assembly. As I said, you have to flee from some things, which doesn't sound like a very Christian thing to do, but that's what the word tells us. We have to flee from some things. We have to fight, uh, follow after, we have to fight, and we also have to be faithful too. Believers should strive for these qualities, all of us, as long as we live. Paul starts off by addressing Timothy in a pretty special way. But you, but you, indicates the contrast between Timothy and what we've just read about previous, which we haven't read this morning, about what was going on with the false teachers. But you, Timothy, you're not like those, but you, Timothy. Man of God. Paul is calling Timothy a man of God. Now that's a, a title used uh, frequently if you uh, study God's word. You'll, you'll read that a lot in the Old Testament. These men of God, God used specifically to tell a message and uh, were often referred to as men of God. Uh, Moses, the prophet, Samuel, Elijah, David, just, just to name a few. So Paul is calling Timothy, but you, man of God, a very Old Testament title. Timothy was God's man, chosen by Paul to be used to shepherd the church at Ephesus with God's message. Today we're commissioning Leighton, Andrew and John as God's chosen men, which I truly believe God has brought them to shepherd God's church here at 109 with God's message on their heart. Are you church family, men or women of God? Can you be called, O oh man of God, O oh woman of God? How do your neighbours, your workmates in your community view you? Are you one of those, well, he's a real man of God. Well, that woman's a real woman of God. Are you known for that? I remember when uh, Bronwyn and I first shifted to Taupo, 22, 23 years ago with our young family and uh, the uh, company that we were contracting out to with our trucks, someone said to me, oh, you're, you're new to Taupo, this is from work. Do you know anyone? How are you going to get involved in the community? And I said, oh, look, we, we, we've, we, we've come along and we go to the church. It was Taupo Gospel Chapel back then, but that's this church, church at 109. And this person who was unsaved, quite a hard person, said, wow, that's a godly church. Those people really know their Bible. That was from someone in the community. Isn't that a great testimony? Are you a man of God or a woman of God? Can we say that about this church? I believe we can. To the ladies supporting your elders, Beth, Lois and Karen, and I'd like to include my wife Bronwyn, never underestimate the effectiveness of your ministry and the support you provide to your husbands in the eldership. You all have a beautiful heart for the Lord and are known by this church at 109 family and in our community as godly, faithful, virtuous woman of God. Proverbs 12 says, An excellent wife is the crown of her husband. Such a woman's worth is far above rubies. We praise God for your faithfulness, ladies, to be standing beside your husbands this morning. As we as a church commission your husbands as incoming elders. It's a big commitment. We praise God for you. But you, man of God, Paul says to Timothy, flee from all this. What is Timothy to flee from? What are we to flee from? What's God telling us this morning? Paul begins by urging Timothy to flee from all of this, and this refers to the allure, the allure of chapter 6, verses 3 to 10, and Ted touched on this last week in relation to the monetary side of things. 
but they relate to worldly pursuits, the love of money over God, harmful desires, malicious talk, constant friction, envy, strife, and evil suspicions that are spoken of in verses 3 to 10. Unfortunately, that description is what was happening in this church of Ephesus at the time. Really sad. These pursuits that you have before you can easily ensnare us as overseers and as men and women of God. Diverting our attention from the true purpose of what we're here for this morning and leading down to a path of dissatisfaction and regret. It really does. To our new elders, you must remain vigilant against these temptations. You never want to undermine your effectiveness as a leader. 1 Peter chapter 5. Be warned, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in your faith. How many of us can look back on our lives and wish we had fled from something in your life? Man, if we had our time again, we could say. Toxic people, inappropriate relationships, harmful desires. When you've got such a love of money, you forget about God altogether. Or maybe at some stage in your life, you made a really stupid mistake. I think we can all say that at some stage of our life. But be assured this morning, it's never too la late to start making good decisions. It's never too late. And good decisions that will honour God if you desire to be a man or woman of God. God, you know, still is in the business of restoring people to himself. Again in First Peter, and the God of all grace. Never forget that our God is of all grace. Will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Aren't they beautiful words written for us this morning? God is still in the business of restoring people back to himself. Never give up. If you are far away from your Savior this morning... Mark spoke on this a couple of weeks ago. Fully submit yourself before the Lord God Almighty and the God of all grace and allow him to use you for his glory. And because we're commissioning our three elders elect this morning, could I remind you what we've learned in Hebrews 13 a few months ago in relation to submitting. This is something as a congregation we have to take in this morning. Hebrews 13, 17. Have confidence in your leaders or your elders. Have confidence in them and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you. That's what our elders are here to do, to watch over you, to shepherd you. As those who must give an account, do this so their work will be a joy, not a burden. For that would be of no benefit to you. It is absolutely of no benefit to you to come against the church with all your problems and nagging and backstabbing and all that. It's of no benefit, the Bible says. Pray for your leadership. It is so important. So important. So we are to submit to the Lord Jesus Christ and we are to submit to our elders presented to you this morning. There is no shortcut to character. There's no detour. I'll start again. There's no shortcut to character, and there's no detour around difficulty in our lives. Trust in God's grace this morning. Flee from the things God is burdening your heart with. Flee from. God is a God of grace. As Paul reminds Timothy of the conduct of the false teachers and bickering congregation of Ephesus in verse 3 to 10, it may be a timely reminder uh, to think back of the children of Israel. They fled Egypt on their pilgrimage to the promised land, remember? 
God was taking them through to the promised land. It was only hardly a week's journey to the promised land. And why did it take 40 years? They murmured. The congregation murmured against God. They, they didn't trust God. They murmured against their leaders, Moses and Aaron. This can't be true. We would have been better back in Egypt as slaves than, than all this. And they talked and they murmured. It's something to consider. We don't want to be like that. It's written in God's word for our learning. Why did God not allow Moses to enter the promised land? The congregation murmured against Aaron and Moses. Their unbelief and lack of faith, coupled with murmuring against Moses and Aaron, caused utter frustration. Remember, Moses got angry and God said, I will give you water, go and talk to the rock. And Moses, short-tempered as he was, he, he struck that rock and water came gushing out. The congregation murmured against them. We need water. Where's your God? Why has he got us out here in the desert? And Moses struck that rock. So that murmuring caused those leaders, or caused Moses not to go into the promised land, all because of what we're talking about here, murmuring behind the scenes. May it never be referred to that this precious church at 109 family be known for that sort of behaviour, like the church at Ephesus. It's there for our learning. It is, and I have worked for months with these new elders coming in. It's been wonderful, wonderful time. And as elders, it's our prayerful desire that this church 109 be known as a welcoming church, intentionally building relationships with God and others by sharing the love of Jesus, worshipping and Bible teaching. That's what we're all about. We're one big family, united through the blood of Jesus Christ. We're in this together. Let's do family life well and pleasing to God. Let's shine God's light out into the community. And we've been doing that in the last couple of days. Isn't that just been a blessing to see? The only Christian float that I know of in the, Christian, in, in the Christmas parade last night, yesterday. And we want to be able to shine God's light out in, in unity, out into the world, under the wings of the Almighty God. Okay. So what are we to do? The Bible tells us, Paul tells Timothy to pursue or to follow. It's my second F. Flee, follow. Instead of chasing these worldly desires, Paul directs Timothy to pursue or to follow godliness. Godliness is not about adhering to rules and following rigid traditions. It's about living in accordance with God's character. Okay? Reflecting his love, compassion, and his righteousness. To our new elders, it's about leading with integrity, humility, and service to our Lord and Saviour. Our church at 109 Prayer for you mean today is that you will be known for your compassion your willingness to serve, and your unwavering commitment to God's principles as listed here in verse 11. You are to be righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Yeah. You know, righteousness is our outward personal character. That's what we're talking about. How do people view us? Godliness is from within. How does God view us? How's our heart? Keep it with integrity. And faith is probably better put as dependability. It's what you believe in that we can, people can depend on you if you're a faithful person. And the love mentioned here, that's agape love. And that's a love that sacrifices for the sake of others. It seeks to give, you 
You see, it seeks to give without wanting gain. Endurance, sticking with it when the going gets tough. And sometimes we all have to do that as Christians, isn't it? We've got to stick at it. Trust in God and gentleness. Sounds a bit of a weak character for, a, for us as, as Christians or for an elder to be gentle. But gentleness is not weakness. Okay? It's power under control. These qualities rooted in deep, a deep relationship with God will empower each one of us, but especially our new elders as you navigate the complexities of your role. I truly believe God has brought this eldership team together this day, and, I truly, and it truly demonstrates faithful Christians who we could sum up with these three men this morning as men of God. I truly believe that. Praise God. Fight the good fight. I don't think Christians were meant to fight. I thought we just had a big lesson on that. Fight the good fight. What does that mean? What is Paul telling Timothy here? The verb fight means, uh, in, in the original language, means keep on fighting. It's, it's, we get our English word uh, agonize. It's that keep fighting to the end or, or striving to win a race. You're striving, you're agonizing to get there. So keep fighting the good fight. Give it your best to win. This fight is not between believers. This fight that we're talking about here is between the person of God and the enemy around us. He is fighting to, to defend the faith that body of truth deposited with the church. Like Nehemiah, Christians today need to have a trowel in one hand for building and a sword in the other hand for battling. It's sad uh, sometimes when Christians spend so much of their time fighting the enemy, they have no time to do the work to build the church. It's something we must be aware of. Paul reminds Timothy of the ultimate God of, goal of leadership. Lay hold on eternal life. Verse 12. Lay hold of eternal life. To which you were called and about to which you, you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Leighton, Andrew and John as elders, we are not just called to manage administrative tasks and resolve conflicts. We are called to guide others towards the Lord Jesus Christ and eternal life, the greatest treasure there is. Remember your leadership, men, is not about seeking personal gain or recognition. It's about serving God and his people with unwavering dedication. Your role is to shepherd, not control and rule, but shepherd those entrusted in your care. Leading them closer to God and helping them fulfill their potential as his children. That's what our eldership is all about. Life is but a vapour, church family. Fight the good fight and take hold of eternal life. Remember Paul at the end of his life said, I have fought the good fight. As a conclusion, to all of you that we call our church family here at 109 and to our new elders, because it's all about you this morning, we're going to be commissioning you shortly. Well, I'll just race back here. Flee from the distractions that can ensnare you and pursue godliness and unwavering determination. This can be for all of us too. Follow righteousness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness, and never lose sight of the ultimate goal in our lives, especially those in leadership, to be used by God to guide others towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the gospel and the hope of eternal life, this is the greatest gift there is. And fight the good fight of faith, taking hold of the eternal life to which you were called. May these words serve as a beacon of hope and inspiration empowering you, Leighton, Andrew and John, our new elders, and to each one of us listening here in this church, next door in the TV church, or if you're listening online, 
to fulfill your calling, to be used to make a lasting impact for Christ in this church at 109 and in our community and in the world around us. Flee, follow, and fight. Remember those things. Let us pray. Father God, we, we, we thank you for Paul's letter to Timothy. And the simplicity of it. And to, to know that the church of Ephesus wasn't perfect. And we stand before you and know that we're not perfect. But we do seek the wisdom from what we've learnt this morning from your word. We just pray that each one of us can flee from those things that are distracting us from our real purpose. And to follow, follow the Lord Jesus Christ and his teachings and, and be in the word. And to fight the good fight as we look towards uh, that wondrous day when you return and we get to spend eternity in glory with you. We just thank you for giving us the Lord Jesus Christ who came to die for the sins of the world for that whoever believes in him and believes in their heart and confesses of their mouth will be saved, the scripture tells us. So we thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. And we ask your blessing upon our time shortly as we commission our new elders. We give you thanks, all honour and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.